<laughs> the one-time administration official who wrote a scathing op-ed in the New York Times and the book A Warning. Remember that? Well, he revealed his identity. He is former Homeland Security Deputy Chief of Staff Miles Taylor, and he defended his actions on Chris Cuomo last night. Take a look. You lied to us, Miles. You were asked in August if you were anonymous here on CNN with Anderson Cooper, and you said no. Now, why should CNN keep you on the payroll after lying like that? Chris, it's a great question, and I'll just give you the blunt truth. When I published a warning, I said in the book that if asked, I would strenuously deny I was the author. This was a very torturous decision. It was not immediate for me to want to publish this work anonymously. Hey, so some people are disappointed that he's anonymous, I guess. I mean, are you? I mean, think about it, Joy. He came out, he landed really the first volley of there's something going on here that you should know about, and people are upset. What do you think? Well, I was hoping that he would be a Melania, but I don't really care, do you? Um, here's what I would say about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't pass the smell <laughs> test, okay? I don't like him. I don't like mm -hmm. him. He was an aide to the chief of uh, staff during the original mm -hmm. separation of children at the border. And his rationalization is that he was trying to protect the children. Well, that, that, to me, is a lot of BS. Because a lot of people in this administration are doing evil things, and the Republican leadership, and they say, oh, I, I wanted to protect the country. A lot of people who are now not there, mm -hmm. Kelly, all those people, they were protecting us against Donald Trump instead of speaking out. That was, I think, a tremendous mistake. I mean, he should have right. known that you do not drag and, and wrench a four-month-old child away from its mother, and you cannot rationalize that. I'm sorry. I do not give this guy a pass. I think he's full of it. And that's my word on him. Okay. What about yeah. you, Sonny? You think that he was going from the inside out, trying to work it and letting us know what was going on, or is it BS uh, from him as well? You know, I tend to agree with Joy on this. I, you know, I, I think that it is very difficult to be a whistleblower. It takes uh, tremendous strength and, and courage and bravery. And I don't know that he had that. Um, he decided to do it anonymously. Um, and, and again, whistleblowers come forward at great personal um, consequence, possibly. I mean, look at um, uh, Vinman, uh, who really lost everything and was personally attacked. And um, his family uh, was personally attacked and, and received death threats. But he did the right thing. I don't know that um, this guy did the right thing. You know, he hid behind his anonymity. And he sounded uh, the alarm, but kind of silently, in my opinion. And if you read uh, Jacob uh, Soboroff, and we had Jacob on uh, uh, our show, he's a journalist, and he was really sounding the alarm about what was happening to children at the border. And he tweeted out that Miles Taylor actually talked about family separation last week. And what he said was, um, he said, you know, it's horrible, but for a lot of them, it's because the parents did not want to claim them. He, after that, deleted the tweet. So he's still playing both mm -hmm. sides of this. And I don't think there is both mm -hmm. sides to the fact that he was part and parcel of an administration uh, that separated children that from right. their for their families and their parents. So right. I, I, I don't think that he is right. sort of the white knight on the horse helping people. What right. about you, Sarah? Did you, what was your reaction when you discovered that it, this was the guy that did it? Well, uh, anticlimactic, but this is also not a whistleblower. This is a fierce opportunist. This is a guy that, uh, rather than taking a risk and putting his name on anything, he uh, kind of cashed in on his job at the White House while kind of dabbling in being someone that people were talking about. He wanted to be, I think the anonymity might have come from the fact that more people talked about him when you realize or it was alluded that he had a higher position. Um, he blatantly lied mm -hmm. to Anderson Cooper, not by pivoting, but by doubling down with a kind of canned response. And so there's this lack of trust right. in what he's doing, but it also kind of, his writing um, had some truth in it. And some of it was, that kind of jumped out at me, was the complete erosion of trust in everyone right now, from President mm -hmm. Trump, who mo a lot of people didn't trust in 2016, but anyone that might have at the time 
definitely doesn't now. You've got a lack of trust in the Republican Party, because as this guy wrote, uh, Trump had a hostile takeover of the party, and you had all these people silent and complicit for years and years. Some are dabbling out now conveniently at election time. And then the erosion in, in the, uh, the trust of the media. You know, you had Trump shopping around the fake media, the fake news. And then in this, though, you know, I do think the bar has been lowered a little bit with media and what's expected of them at, in opposition of him. And this is a good example. The New York Times touted this guy as something bigger than he was. And today we stand here with a someone who wasn't really a senior official of anything. So um, anticlimactic would be the best word for this. Right. See, I'm glad he did it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm glad he put it out there, because had he not put that out there, we would not recognize that 555 kids have not been reunited with their families. I think we thought a lot of stuff was happening. We didn't know. And when it came out, you know, everybody wanted to know who it was. And, you know, he's not going to say, listen, I'm a, a, a lower level person, but, you know, because then people are not going to take it seriously. They're going to say, well, he's not really up there. But apparently he did know what he was talking about. And was it the best way to do it? I don't know if anybody can ever say to a whistleblower, as you said, what the best way to do it is. Some people can step out and say, that was me and feel good. And some people have to do it this way. I'm glad he did it. I'm glad he did it because it made it harder for them to pretend it wasn't happening. Oh, and Sonny, you know, as always, there is that tremendous legal note. <laughs> there is a legal note, but I do not have my prompter up. So I think someone else is going to have to do oh, it for me. I can do it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, can, I, got, I can run yeah. with it. Trump. What? Oh, you want to do it? Whoop. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, Trump responded to Miles it, Taylor's sir. reveal by firing off a two-part tweet saying he had, quote, never even heard of him, calling it just another New York Times scam. <laughs> Trump went on to call oh. Taylor a sleazebag and a low-level lowlife who should be prosecuted during a campaign rally in Arizona. No, yeah, know see, that's, that's the thing that I love. Anybody. Yeah, don't know him, never saw <laughs> Yes, he never met him, he doesn't know him, you know, but he doesn't say none of that is true. And that's the magic of right. what this ah. kid did. They don't deny it. That's right. That's the that's the thing that I that got me in the head. 